Okay, today let's take a look at what is geography, what is a map, and what is a geographic grid system. So number one, what is geography? Geography is geo and graphy, which translates to earth and a graph or earth writing, earth description. So literally, geography, which was more or less invented by the Greeks who are credited with the scientific study of geography, uh, they came up with that word. So earth description or earth writing. So the next thing that's super important for geographers is a map. I've got one behind me and I wanted to look at some of the features that make up a map. All of us are familiar with, let's say, a map of the United States and the different states. Uh, and I wanted to look at what are some of the components here. The first one, of course, would be a title. So let me zoom into the title area and where a key is and talk about scale as well. Okay, so here you can see we have a title, Map of the United States. Here is a scale, and this is a graphic scale. Um, another thing a map has is a projection here. I'll go over that in just a second. The next thing it has is a key. You can see it says explanation of symbols. And then often it has some other information down in here, maybe a date. In fact, it says right here 2001. It may have a um, representative fraction, which I'll show you in another map. So let's take a look now at scale and a projection. Here's another really cool map. These are landforms of the United States. You can see California right there in the Great Central Valley. And I wanted to pan down now to the key. Very simple map, but again, all maps have certain elements. First of all, a title. And secondly, a scale. Now we can see the graphical scale there. But if I were to zoom in further, uh, we would actually see what's called the representative fraction. So let me just give it a shot. Um, and, and actually right there, it's actually a little too small to see, but it says scale and then it says one colon something or another. So let me go to the whiteboard now to illustrate what that means. Okay, so here I am at the whiteboard and I wanted to talk about scale a little bit more specifically because this is important. You can see I have a metal scale right in here. And this is just simply one inch is equal to that length. So I want to take a look at the scale that we just saw on the map of landforms. Okay, so it had what is known as a representative fraction, or RF for short, and the number was 1 colon 3,500,000. Okay, so most people would say, okay, well that means one inch equals 3,500,000. However, it means one unit is equal to 3,500,000 in the real world. So yes, you could say one inch on that map is equal to 3,500,000 inches in the real world, but then you'd have to translate that to something more meaningful. And that's why they have this graphic scale. But the good news about this is, you know, if you're in China or Germany or some other foreign country and you see this, you can translate it no matter what. Okay, and this is like a model airplane, a model, you know, trucks that I used to build when I was younger. It's just like a scale model. Okay, so you just scale it up. All right, so just to be kind of silly here, I have a, a giant sequoia coin, cone. And you could have one of those on the map, and then you'd have this many cones in the real world if you stacked them up end to end. Now, or let's say here's a cork right here. Okay, you can stack those up end to end. You'd have how many? 3,500,000. Okay, so again, think of this as an equal sign. Whatever unit's on the left, let's say it's feet, then that's how many feet it is in the real world. That's scale, and that's the representative fraction. I wanted to take a look now at projections. Now on to projections. So how do we make a flat world out of a globe? Something round. In other words, like I have an orange right in here. How am I going to make that flat? That's what a projection does. 
it has pros and cons. Okay, so, but first of all, let's take this orange just for the heck of it and start to peel it. And we can see I have to rip it in places. Okay, and fortunately, a projection's a little bit less chaotic than this. However, uh, it does, boy, that smells good. All right, so let's take a look at this textbook that I use. <clears throat> all right, so you could take, for example, a cylinder, put a light bulb in the middle, project that image onto the cylinder, and then unroll it and you get a flat map. The pros are that you have a nice square map there. This is the Mercator projection and it's a cylindrical family. Okay, um, The Mercator was famous for beautiful straight lines, however it made Greenland much bigger than South America. All right, So take a look at maybe some maps on your own. See how big Greenland is. It's supposed to be like the size of Brazil, much smaller than, um, you know, Greenland's supposed to be a lot smaller than South America. So it gets distorted at the ends. Okay, there are other families. So cylindrical is a real common one. Uh, planar, where you put a flat surface and project onto that. And also conic. Conic, you could drape a cone over the top of the globe and project onto that. The good thing about that is it maintains shapes and size. The bad thing about it is that it um, makes your lines of latitude swooped like that or curved. That was the map projection that we <clears throat> saw on both these maps. All right, so here's that giant map in the United States. And if we zoom in on that, which you can't see, but I'll read it for you. It says Lambert conformal conic projection. So that's an extremely popular, and I would remember it, <clears throat> okay, Lambert conformal. That's the conic. It's very popular because it does maintain the shape and size, uh, and it has some negatives, but the positives tend to outweigh the negatives. Okay, so I wanted to move on now to geographic grid systems. Now let's move on to geographic grids or geographic grid systems. Now I'm just going to give you an overview here and then each one of these topics could have its own video or episode. So latitude and longitude, this is like uh, 38 degrees north, 121 degrees west, that's roughly my latitude and longitude. It's an XY coordinate system. UTM stands for Universal Transverse Mercator and that uses meters with eastings and northings as well as the zone. State plane is another system that you would find on a U.S. geologic survey map, known as a topo map. Um, you will have this system, this system, and this system. That's why I'm mentioning them all. And then finally, another kind of unique one that goes way back early in our history of the United States with this grid system is the public land survey system or the township and range system. So I just kind of want to draw maybe each one of them real simple and just to give you an overview. All right, so let me erase. All right, so if we had, let's say the equator, that's an easy zero, right? We're going to use zero degrees for both latitude and longitude as well as UTM. And then, I believe it was in 1884, was zero degrees goes through Greenwich, England. And that is where we start with longitude. So this is latitude, this is longitude. There's different names for these. But let me just give you an example where I live. So I live right there where the X is. So what that would be would be 38 degrees. Now is that north or south of this line? It's north, right? So that's north. And then you could say, okay, which side am I, is, am I to the west? This is to the west, that's to the east, and that happens to be 121 degrees to the west. You can break that down further into minutes and seconds. I'm not going to do that here. Let's move on to UTM. Universal Transverse Mercator. We're going to use the civilian version of this. This is a lot simpler system, so I'm going to erase this. And I'm just actually going to erase the whole grid system. So imagine we're within a zone, okay, and the details um, are a little 
complicated, but really it's a simple system. So let's say I'm in zone 10, that's here in California. And then there's basically an easting and a northing. Okay, so, and it, all it is is an XY coordinate system. So, for example, my easting, I believe, was around 655. So I'm in zone 10. So you might say like something like 10 north. I'm not sure of the exact notation. Then the easting is 655. A really simple number. That's not exact. And then I think I'm like 4. Point, I kind of forget, but I think I'm like 4.3 million meters, and that's the key here, meters north of the equator. So if you know your zone, that's pretty easy. Then you just say your easting and your northing, and that's it. For the state plane, totally different numbers, by the way. If you look at these USGS quadrangles or topo maps, you're going to see what zone you're in. So I'm pretty sure I'm in zone 3. So here I'm in zone three in California. And then there's going to be kind of a, again, a baseline and a principal meridian. And let's say I'm out here. So then you might have this, this XY coordinate system, but it's going to be in feet. Let me write that down. So it's going to be an X and a Y, and then it's going to be in feet. You will see, if you take a geography lab or just look at a topo map on your own, you will see the numbers on the left of the map and at the bottom of the map in feet. And you'll see the UTM, usually it's abbreviated, they take away three zeros, and that's abbreviated. The key gives you all the answers. And then finally, let's just real quickly kind of draw this last one, Township and Range. This is its own episode unto itself, and I actually want to fly an airplane and look down to show you these squares. But basically, the Earth is just brought, is chunked up into squares, and um, each one of these squares is within the six mile by six mile township. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to chunk this up correctly here. Let's see here. So one, two, three. Okay, so one, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that snakes its way on down so that you get 36 of these, right? Okay, you get 36 units. Now I'm going to tell you what they are right now, even though I'd like to talk about this again. So this is a township, this giant square, which, by the way, you can't really see when we're in the airplane. But I guarantee you can see what's known as a section. Okay, a section. I'm going to even erase this because this is important. So a section is one of these squares right in here, and that's what you really see from the landscape. A section, it is, <clears throat> number one, it's a square mile. So it's one square mile, which, by the way, happens to be 640 acres. So that's a lot, right? 640 acres is a lot, one giant square mile. You, typically on the map has a number 1 through 36. And if we look down at Google Earth or, or have the chance to find an airplane, you'll see these squares, and that's a section. Okay, one square mile is a section. And that's it for maps and grid systems and overview.